sing and pray and be busy every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will praise in the vineyard, vineyard of the Lord. Thank you for each and every one who was able to make it. We ask that you be with the ones that's on your way. Father. Thank you for Brother McClain that you bring to the knowledge the things that you have learned that it may speak to us, Father. We uh, ask thank you for Sister McClain that she was able to make it today. Uh, and thank you for all this. We ask prayer for all the sick and shut in Father also. Then you may heal them and bring them back with us again. Go with us as we study another portion of the word in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. All right. It is good to see everybody. It is good for us to come together again and to, to study God's holy and divine word. I'm getting ready to pass out a, a pad. And I just want you to write the names of people that you are acquainted with who are not Christians on this list. And I will be praying for them for the next eight weeks. So I will be collecting this list ongoing for the next eight weeks. But I want you to write down the names of individuals as we're going through class. Just write down the name of individuals that you know, that you love, that you care about, who have not yet obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are not Christians. Also, I'm going to ask you on that list, 
write down the names of those you know who are members of the church who have fallen away. Okay? So I want names of non-Christians and names of those who are Christians who have fallen away. Uh, next to the name of the person who has fallen away, just put their name in the dash aura for restoration and I'll know what to pray about, about for them. Uh, I have talked with the elders. Uh, June 2nd is going to be a very special day here. We're going to have a one day revival gospel meeting. Uh, all of this is leading up. This is the beginning of some things we'll be doing over the next eight weeks uh, in preparation for these three young men, uh, three young preachers from Michigan who are on a tour. They're going to different churches in the state of Michigan. They're taking turns preaching. They are being uh, mentored by uh, Dr. Clyde Mayberry, minister and one of the elders of the Allen Carr Church of Christ. And I just thought that we have not had a gospel meeting in a while. I thought this might be a good way to have a one day gospel meeting. You'll hear more about it. Uh, they, one will speak during the Sunday school time. Another one will speak during the morning worship. I hope that we will have a fellowship meal together. Uh, then we will have an afternoon program where the third one will, will speak. Uh, but I will be putting a lot of emphasis on uh, connecting with those who are not Christians that we know and encouraging them to hear and obey the gospel of Christ. Uh, between now and, and then, uh, there will be Thirsty Thursday. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do it only once a month. It might be two times a month, maybe the entire month of May. Uh, and I will be answering questions about baptism in particular, but also other questions that people have who are not members, especially of, of the body of Christ. So just wanted to uh, let you know about those things. I had a book somewhere. What did I do with it? You said Thursday Thursday would start in May? No, I, I'll let you know. Okay. It's probably going to start uh, this month. This month, April, but in May, I may do it four Thursdays in a row okay. leading up to uh, June 2nd. So I want you all to pray about that, pray, uh, and I'll give you some more information about these individuals. We'll put it on our website. We'll have flyers. Uh, we will be passing out house to house on a few occasions during the next two months. And those who feel they can do it can, can join us in getting them. To, I have an office full of boxes of old heart to hearts covering a whole wall. I need to get those boxes out of my office. Uh, those were the extra ones that they send us for visitors. And they send us 200 a month. They mail 800 to a certain area, send us 200. Well, we haven't had 200 visitors each month. So they're kind of piling up. So I think the best way for me to get rid of those is just take them. And so the next eight weeks, there will be, I call it a blitz as far as evangelism is concerned. And you'll hear, you'll hear more about that. We together? Why are y'all frowning? <laughs> Why y'all smiling? <laughs> you say what? You're trying to breathe. <laughs> Sister Beth? <laughs> well, what, what I have done in the past, Thirsty Thursday, I had people come here to the building. And it was strictly to ask questions, ask Bible yes. questions, especially was open to those who were not members of the church. And so members would bring non-members with them. But members also had some questions, yes. some questions as well. Uh, and that was done on one Thursday a month. Uh, then the pandemic hit and all of that kind of got thrown out. Uh, but I want to do it again, but I... Again, I'm kind of gearing up toward that one day. Time of day. Hmm? Time of day. Uh, it was done in the evening. Okay, it was done in the evening. Uh, we will, I will probably, 
do it here and over Zoom. That's what I'm thinking I might do. That way, there are those who might have member, uh, friends who are not members of the church. They can't get them to come to the building, but they'd be willing to, to watch with them on, on Zoom. And I can answer the questions that way. Uh, but that's that's my thought process right, right now. Um, any other questions? Because I know folks thirsty because they ask all the questions on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> It's Thursday Sunday. That's what, <laughs> that's what it is. Thursday Sunday. So, brother Beeman, you said to be non-Christian or Christian, right? Did you write down? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Non-Christians oh, okay. for them to be open to hearing the the, the gospel. Someone studying with them. Uh, for the Christians, I want those who need to be restored. Uh, yeah. Who have who have fallen who have fallen away? Mm -hmm. um, so, so we are on which page? I heard you all debating about it earlier. Fifty-six. Fifty-six. When we need God the most, He will come to us in unexpected, unexpected ways. When we need God the most, he will come to us in unexpected ways. Now, on page 55, before we start uh, this next section on page 55 or 56, we did go over when we need God the most, he will he will provide. And I gave you a supplement last week. Did you all bring it with you? Yes, sir. Some of you were not here, so you're looking at me like, okay, how do I get one? Uh, can you go make me some copies of this, Brother Donald? How many do, do we need? 10, 15? About 10 of those. And I, I want to go over that because it talks about God providing and how God in the Bible provided for, for the people of God. I am becoming more and more aware of the need to point us to the Bible. And to point us to incidences in the Bible that support these, these lessons. Because the Bible is really God's love letter to us. He helps us to understand his will and his working in, in, in our lives. Uh, I know we talk about history, but it's really not history, it's his story. Everything from Genesis 1 up to this point in time has really been God's story. And what he's given us in the Bible is to help us better understand his, his story. So we looked at all of the bad problems that people had last week or could have and how even in the midst of those struggles, God is providing, whether we recognize it or not. So while we're waiting, and well, I was going to say, while we're waiting on Brother Donald, I was trying to filibuster, to, I need one, uh, so we got, he got back in here and he beat me to it. So let's look at some of the things that God provides for us as children of God. And I see a young lady hiding behind the bath. Sister. Okay. And did she say cheese? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for being with us. According to the Bible, God provides for various reasons. Not only does God provide for us, God has reasons for providing for his children. Does that make sense? 
Yes. And I'm going to say right now, honey, thank you for sitting on the second row, second row. As you can see, they don't believe I take showers when I come in here. When they, they, they move to the back. Uh, just joking. Just joking. Just corny, I guess. God provides for various reasons. The first one, someone read that. Love and compassion. Yeah, we're on that sheet right there, brother. Yeah. Sister Cherie. Love and compassion. God, God's love for humanity is often cited as the primary reason for his salvation. In John 3 16, it is stated that for God so loved the world that he gave his own, his one and only son. God's provision is seen as an expression of his love and compassion towards his so the very first reason God provides for us is because he loves us. I mean, he so loved the world. When it says he so loved the world, it's really talking about humanity. And that's saint and sinner. He loved everybody who was, of course, under sin enough to send his son to die for us on the cross. God loved us enough to send his son. Sometimes I think we forget God still loves us. Okay, I got one amen on that one. Sometimes I think we forget that. And, and part of the reason we forget that is because we beat ourselves up so much because of our failures. We as human beings tend to love people because of what they do or can do for us or how they make us feel. Okay. God's love is more an action based more on him and his nature than on us. Romans 5, 8 puts it this way. God commendeth his love toward us and then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God did not love us when we became lovable. Matter of fact, some of us are still not flowing. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not calling no names. I didn't say it was you, but uh, there are times when we are not lovable and God still loves us. Brother Bing? Yeah, what about when you, know, you can go to someone's house or not, then they close the door in your face? Now, what Jesus was talking about, see here again, context is king. Mm -hmm. Jesus had sent the disciples out on what is called the limited commission. Yeah. And he sent them out two by two. As a matter of fact, it was seven day up. And he told them, don't take any, it, yeah, any provisions. You know, the people you go to, they will provide for you. And, but, and they said, whoever lets you into their house, bless that house. Whoever turns you away, shake the dust of your feet and, and keep going. That was in that context. For some reason, we, we, we're so quick to want to wipe the dust off our feet. And, and the, the idea then was a total rejection of the message. Okay. Just because somebody slams the door in my face doesn't mean I kick the dust off my feet. Just because I call somebody and who's a member of the church and I'm trying to win them back and they don't want to talk right now does not mean that I cut I, I wipe the dust off. Okay, forget you. I ain't going to even pray for you. I'm not going to worry about you. I ain't no. That's not what it's talking about. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, most sinners are not going to accept you readily. Y'all looking at me strange. Okay. They don't want to hear. 
And sometimes they'll tell you they don't want to hear. And sometimes they will tell you they don't want to hear in a way that you don't miss that they don't want to hear. But the Bible says the harvest is plenteous. The laborers are filled. Why did Jesus come? He said, I came to seek and to save the lost. He also said that the righteous have no need of a physician, which means that you and I are approaching sick folk most of the time, mm -hmm. if not all the time. Mm -hmm. And most of them don't know it. And most of them don't know that they're lost and they don't know that they're sick. Okay. What's keeping from knowing, The devil. The God of, with the little G of this world. Paul told the Corinthians that. See, here we go with the questions. I told you they all asked. That's why we had to have Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> but anyway, Paul told the Corinthians that the God with the little G of this world has blinded the minds of those that hear so they won't believe. You and I, for some reason, we act like we do this thing called Christianity in a vacuum. We don't do it in a vacuum. There is an enemy out there and in here. Okay, I'm not going to say it, just out there because he comes to church too. There is an enemy who does not want the message of God to reach the minds of men and women. Yes. And he actively works at it. That's his job. And he's on it 24 7. But God loves us so much that he says, That's okay, I'm going to thwart all of that. So he provides for us. The second thing God uh, reason God provides for us is what? Okay, somebody gonna read it? The Bible emphasizes that God is faithful to his promise. In Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, it is mentioned that know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him. And keep his commandments. God provides for his people to fulfill his promises and remain true to his word. Now, isn't that something? God provides for us. God is faithful even when we're not. Does that make sense? God's gonna keep his word. No, he never changed. But God is gonna keep his, his word. One of the things that we have to get across to those who are not Christians is this, that all of the promises of God are yes in Christ Jesus. So it's all right for them to want the promises of God. You just got to go where the promises are. You got to get in Christ. And for children of God who are members of the family of God already, and they decide they want to leave Christ to go to try to get some of those promises in another way, in another venue, they, what's the word? They forfeit some of the promises of God. Hmm. Salvation is a promise of God. Guess where it is? In Christ Jesus. God hearing and answering my prayers on an ongoing basis are a promise of God. But guess where the answer to those prayers comes from? I'm in Christ. Brother Beeney? When we read in the Bible, there's a point that when you read and there's a piece you study, but there are many people, my brother preaching, that don't know what reading a certain is about. That's why they missed the whole book. You have people in the church. They don't know. They don't know. But the people out there who don't know, 
There was a reason Matthew 28 was put in our Bibles. Matthew 28, verse 18, 19, and 20. Jesus appeared to them on the mountaintop. And he said, all authority, all exousia, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples. We say, King James Version says, teach all nations. The word there literally means make disciples. Guess what? You cannot make disciples without some effort. It says, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Ethnos, literally the word is races, all peoples. And once you make them a disciple, you baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Then you teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Mm -hmm. I had I was convinced a long time ago that. Jesus meant what he said. He meant that if you and I do what he said in that text, as we are going, we make disciples, teach them, baptize them, then he would be with us. I came to the conclusion a long time ago that God and Christ are not with us in the way he wants to be when churches only keep house. I see your hand, Brother Beeman. I want that to sink in. What do I mean by that? When the church is only focused on her comfort, and ceases to reach out to lost people, then we are majoring in minors and minoring in majors. We're forfeiting some of God's power and God's blessings on us. I believe Jesus really meant what he said. As you are going, as you go through your daily life, you're supposed to be teaching people. I'm supposed to be teaching people. But don't we teach by example? I'm glad you brought that up. Because we, we turned that into an excuse. Because Jesus wasn't talking about teaching by an example. Romans 10, 17 is still in your Bible. Faith comes by yeah. hearing and hearing by the word of God. Saving faith doesn't come by our example. Saving faith comes through the teaching of the gospel of Christ. So, so somebody, somebody can look at my life and say, well, he's a good guy. They can even say he's the nicest man I ever met. But if I do not open my mouth and teach them the gospel of Christ, it does not matter. And for far too long, we have thought that all I got to do is I've got to behave right and I've got to act right, but I don't have to say nothing. Honey? It's a full time job. Just like the devil's on his job 24 7, that's how we're supposed to be. No matter where we are going, where we are at, if we're standing in line at the supermarket, we look for opportunities to talk to a person or stand in there and bring up something in order to start a conversation. It's amazing what can happen, how God will work. And, and thank you, honey. And that's exactly right. 
But we have gotten away from teaching people the gospel. Wow. Because we're complacent. Yes. Our focus is only on the ones who are already here. <clears throat> God ain't never told us to be satisfied with those who are already here. Those of us who watch the news sometimes, or when we go out and about and we see what's going on in the world, we see just how sin is just, it seems like it's getting worse and worse. Wouldn't that give us incentive to? That ought to give us incentive to do more than we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's one reason I gave y'all that list and there's some other things I'm going to do over the next eight weeks. We may not be able to do it the way we used to do it, but God expects us to do it. Yes. No child of God should have been a member of the Lord's church for any length of time, and they never converted. Nobody? <laughs> they never endeavored to teach. Nobody? I know we can't make people obey the gospel. But the only way you're going to convert people is the gospel has to be taught. It has to be. And it has to be taught on more than just Wednesday and Sunday. And it has to be taught by more than just the preacher and the elders. Amen. Sister Charmaine? And thank you, Sister Charmaine. That, that was a great tool. I've used it in the past. Fishers of men, ambassadors for Christ. I've taught them all. But what we do is we only get excited for a little while. And then after a while, we fall back into a rut. You know what a rut is? It's a grave with both ends kicked out. Charmaine mentioned it. Fishers of men. When was the last time any of you who have done that Use that with someone. Or did we become distracted by other stuff going on in the church? Hello. See, you heard me say this before, that a church that is evangelistic minded gets along better with each other. A church that is a soul winning church is so busy reaching lost people that they don't allow the petty things to get in and disrupt the unity of the body of Christ. But when you take your focus off of saving lost folk, the devil has his way. He does. And oh, God is faithful. God said, if you go teach, make disciples, I'll be with you. That's just that's just Bible. Jesus said, I came to see, and, and that's interesting. He said, I came to see and to say. I came to look for and to say. I didn't wait for the say, the lost to come to me. Right. 
So he goes again. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, I have never seen a scripture that said invite sinners to church. <laughs> yeah, not an amen in the house. <laughs> oh. Uh, See, uh, we think we've done our job if we invite him to come to church. <laughs> That's only part of what we're doing. Yes. My responsibility to them does not end with coming to church. You know, I, I, I want to take a, a risk and share something. Here's a lady in my current building. I had taken her food for the last month. Didn't ask any questions. You don't have any groceries, whatever. But I, every time I cook, I take a plate to her, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm. And I said to her, because she thinks she may have major surgery, and I said, why are you so distressed? And she said, I may not be here after surgery. And I said to her last week and before, I don't want you to leave here without knowing the power of God, without developing a relationship with Jesus. And when you are feeling better, I want to bring you to my church. I want you to hear what my minister is talking about and what drives me every day because I care about you and I love you. And I don't want you to believe that you're going to have major surgery and nobody loves you or cares about you. So every day, even yesterday, and we'll do today, I take her plate of food. That's wonderful. Yes. What I'm supposed to do. One of the things I would change, though, if you've been doing this for a month, you've established a relationship. Hmm. Why are you going to wait till after surgery? Well, no, I'm getting her ready before surgery. Surgery is, is in the... Uh, on the 14th of April. So when you go sit down and talk to her about the gospel? I'm going to sit down every day, a little bit. So you tell the scripture about what you need to do to be saved. This is this is why I am who I, I am. Your Sunday program <laughs> and I go through the five steps of what you need to do. Okay, that's all, all I that's all, that's all I care about. I got it. So you're teaching her now, because yes. because you don't want to wait till after surgery. She might not make it through surgery. Right, right. And I just want that to be in place. But notice what you did. You you show kindness first. Yes. And then you had an opportunity to share where that kindness came from. Yes. I've been since I've come back to church, I've been trying to do better. Okay. And Praise the Lord. This is a part of my restoration. To do better. better. Praise the Lord. That's called repentance. Changing my mind, changing my will, changing my, my actions, my behavior. So when we talk about God providing for us, God is faithful through his promises. How do we get on that when we talk about God faithful through his promises? And God loves us. And for the child of God, someone read number three. Let's see if we find that God sometimes provides or withholds certain things to test the faith and character of individuals. In the story of Abraham and Isaac, Genesis 22, God tested Abraham's faith by asking him to sacrifice his son only to provide a ram at the last moment. This test revealed Abraham's obedience and trust in God. Abraham, sometimes God provides and sometimes God withholds provision to test us. Can you trust me when the balance in the account is not as high as it normally is? Can you trust me when things are going on with your body, your body and doctors can't figure it out? Am I only good when everything's going right in your life? When Peter 
saw Jesus walking on the water, Peter understood something that you and I sometimes forget. When Jesus said, don't be afraid, it is I, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. See, God tests us to see whether we're going to be obedient. Some folks are more obedient when things are going well in their lives than they are when things aren't going so well. See, I can love Brother Donald when he treating me right and he, he's speaking to me and everything else. You know. And am I going to still love him when he's having a bad day and I don't even know it and, and he's not treating me so well? Hmm. Got to know now. I want to see what you made of now. You love him when he's smiling at you, but what about when he's angry? Whether it's for a right reason or not a reason, a good reason. Can you still love him then? Who said no? <laughs> no, God is saying you're supposed to. <laughs> He's not saying, you know, you don't love, no. God test us. Where's my faith when I'm not feeling well? Where is your faith then? You say, okay, thank you. Have a good day. And then you open the mail and there's a check from out of nowhere that you just got this bless you with some money that you weren't expecting. But you trust him to provide. Thank you, man. What about number four, teaching and discipline? Number four. Oh. God's provision can also serve as a form of teaching and discipline. In the wilderness, God provided manna to the Israelites to teach them dependence on him and to, and to discipline them in their disobedience. Exodus 16. God provided and taught them. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when God gave them the manna, they were just like us. Finally, they started complaining and they said, we loathe this light bread. <laughs> Moses, we sick of this light bread. <laughs> they wanted me. And so Moses interceded with God on their behalf and then God rained down quail. But God said, okay, you're not happy with the manna. You won't quail. I'm going to rain down so much till it's going to make you sick to your stomach just to look at it. <laughs> See, sometimes God gives us stuff that we ask for that he knows we really don't need. <clears throat> Yeah, people can say amen. <laughs> God is always teaching us. He's always trying to discipline us. Let me ask this. Is that do you, any church of Christ on this earth that a preacher supposed to do everything? He don't want nobody. Ah. <laughs> 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 The Bible says that the preacher is to commit things to faithful men. Right, right. If you ain't faithful, you better do it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I get so tired of, of hearing people say, well, if you give me a job, then I'll become faithful. No, I ain't giving you no job so you can be faithful. The Bible says I give you a responsibility because you've proven yourself to be faithful. And you give them the responsibility so they can teach others to be faithful. 
if they're not faithful and you give them the responsibility, they still don't be faithful. Me, brother. But this brother, he, he does everything. I don't, I don't know what brother you're talking about. No. Okay. All I know is that, and, and I take seriously my responsibility. Yeah. As a matter of fact, somebody has said in this congregation, <laughs> they were talking about me behind my back. And they didn't know that it was heard and that the person who heard them were going to tell me, said, you know, Bill McClain, get on my nerves. He always want everything perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't want it perfect, but I do want to try to do what God told me to do. I do want I, I do want to do everything that we're doing the way God says we're to do it, and God deserves our best. Amen. <laughs> Brother Donald said that. Well, they didn't think it was a compliment. <laughs> Sometimes we're so critical of leaders, whether it's the preacher, whether it's elders and, and sometimes we're critical of them and we don't even know why they do what they do. I've been doing this long enough to know that a lot of criticism of preachers as well as elders is unfair and unjust. Hello. So you're talking about a brother, he's doing it all, but see, the assumption you're making is that he's doing it all because he don't want nobody else to do it. That's an assumption you make. And when you make an assumption, you make a donkey out of you and me. Okay, brother, you know what, Brother Beeman, I love you. I'm not worried about that, brother. Oh, okay. If he's not in this congregation, oh, yeah. I can't help him. Okay. okay. I'm trying to help us. Okay. Uh, Sister Beverly. Kind of forced into discussion. Overall, we started out, I came out a little bit late, but we were focusing on the responsibilities of the church, the congregation. Um, and I think um, as we got down to point number three, when we started to talk about Abraham, it brought to my mind that we sometimes hide behind what the church is doing, and rather than what individuals do. And when you think about individuals, you don't get to think about everybody else. You got to start thinking about me and what am I doing for the cause of Christ? What am I doing to teach others? When I have the opportunity, how many opportunities am I having? Yes. Whether I have an opportunity to teach others and not. But a, a lot of times we, you know, if the church is doing okay, then you're doing okay, so I'm a part of me. When the church is not doing so okay, I'm still a part of the church and <clears throat> I'm not doing okay, I'm not doing okay. So how do I fix that? I got to focus not on, on what the church is doing, but I got to focus. Primarily on what am I do, and I think that you know, a lot of times we want to bring people to them. And if you can't do it on your own, the right thing to do is to bring them to someone who okay. can do it. Yeah. But that's not an excuse for you not making an effort to do it. You got to, you got to learn to do what God wants you to do, and then you have to make up your mind that you want to do that. You know, know that you want to do that. That's a great point, Sister Beverly. Because, by the way, we make up the church as individuals. Yes. Now, no one individual is the church. Okay, it's called the ecclesia, the called out body. So they are a bunch of individuals that make up the church. But as individual Christians, we determine what the church is. Hmm. So a lot of times I hear people say, uh, well, the church needs to be more loving. Well, are you? <laughs> <laughs> the church needs to be more welcoming. Well, are you? Because <laughs> the only person you can really, I hate to even use the word control, 
But the only person you responsible for is you. Amen. So I can determine whether when the Bible says be filled with the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 5, you know what the Bible is actually saying to you and I is that you and I determine how filled with the Spirit we are. You and I determine how much the Spirit leads and guides us by how much we obey God's Word. See, the Holy Spirit is not going to hit you in the top of your head and slap your head up against the wall and make you do nothing. But as I do what God's word has told me to do, that's the Holy Spirit controlling me. Okay. <laughs> then if you're not, somebody else is, you know, Paul, said, Paul put it this way, to whom do you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants who are to whom you obey. Either we are yielding to God or we're yielding to Satan. There is no middle. There is no middle ground. Either God controls us, or Satan controls us. Amen. Amen. Five to bring glory to Himself. The Bible also states that God provides for His people to bring glory to Himself. In Matthew 5, 16, it is mentioned, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. God's provision can be a testimony to his goodness, faithfulness, and power. That's probably the most important thing to me is that you and I ought to be making God look good. Amen. Every day of our lives, we are supposed to be pointing people to God. We're supposed to be lifting up God's reputation. Hmm. That's what it means to give God glory. It literally means to give God credit and to make God look good. And when God provides for us, he looks good. That's why we ought to be saying thank you every day of our lives. So, now we can get to page 56. <laughs> Any thoughts for anyone? And Sister Charmaine, it's good to see you back. I hope you all had a good time. Page 56, when we need God the most, he will come to us in unexpected ways. Someone read that. At first glance it appears that God is using Zebra. We come to find out later that Zebra was only an opportunist who was taking advantage of his crippled master. God does not always choose a mighty to minister to us. He chooses the one who can bring us closer to him. Several years ago, my family spent the night at Daytona Beach. It was a tough night. At the time, we had two children. One of them was just over a year old, the other was four. Needless to say, sleep was not on the agenda for the one-year-old. By about 5 a.m., the motel room was tense and everyone was exhausted. My then four-year-old suggested we go watch the sunrise. We reluctantly went. We met a man at the beach. He was a large, bearded, tattooed biker who was sitting on his large beach tricycle fishing. He offered to let our four-year-old fish. As Hunter reeled in a whiting, Curtis fell asleep and strode. The biker began to talk to me about the blessing of family and that he wished he had children. I began to not be so tense anymore as I remembered how blessed I was. As we walked back to the motel, I felt the urge to go thank the man for what he had done. As I turned to go back, he was not there. To this day, I do not know if he was an angel or a big man who could ride a tricycle extremely fast. All I know is that God used an unexpected source to bless my family. God used an unexpected source to bless his family. God 
blesses us, provides for us in unexpected ways. Sister McLean just mentioned one. All of us could probably mention different opportunities when we think back on them where God provided for us. And he provided from an unexpected and unexpected source. And un living this life as a Christian is challenging. And when you're trying to do your best, sometimes you can get to feeling like you're out there all by yourself. And God sends a voice from someone somewhere that says, I see you. I see you. You may not think that you're being recognized or people are not aware, but guess what? I, I see. I don't know whether this man on the tricycle was an angel or not, but I do know the Bible, the Hebrew writer says this, and, and I just kind of take God at his word. Be careful how you entertain strangers. Because some have entertained angels unawares. I am of the belief that God still has angels that operate doing his will. I don't know if I've ever seen one or I heard one, but angels didn't cease to exist once the Bible falls. The pages of inspiration. And the Hebrew writer wants us to know, you be careful how you treat strangers. Because some have entertained angels unawares. God uses sometimes the, the simplest and I hate to use the word simple because I don't want to, you know, insult anybody. <laughs> but what human beings might call the most insignificant person to be a blessing in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so we, 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 need to be, we need to be aware that God is sovereign and God still works. And then the last one, we need God the most. Page 57. We need God the most. He will often use those who we have helped to help us. What did Mephibosheth have before David blessed him? He had nothing. So those things he had sent to David in reality, came from David in the first place. If we ever wonder why God is not using others to bless us, we may need to ask ourselves if we have allowed God to use us to bless others. When we invest in the lives of others, we are investing in our own future. We may need those very people that we are serving to serve us one day. Thank you, Sister Cherie. This section really jumped out at me because I had not thought about the fact that everything Mephibosheth gave David was what David had given to Mephibosheth when he asked, was there anybody from Saul's household still alive? And they told him about Mephibosheth. He gave Mephibosheth all of the land belonged to Saul and to Jonathan and all of the possessions. And, and so, so when he, he turns around, around and blesses David, he actually blesses David with what David gave him. That's why it's, it's important that we, we remember that the text in Luke 6 is talking about more than just giving in the church assembly. <coughs> This thought gives the words of Christ a new meaning. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke 6, 38. We all have those times we need to be served. 
We all have those times when we are in desperate need of God's provision. From this story, we learn that when we need God the most, he is faithful to provide. But we need to be looking for it and we need to accept it. And most importantly, we need to make sure we are God's hands serving others when they need him the most. I've often said that God has no hands but ours. Yes. He has no feet but ours. He has no mouth but ours. When you hear me say, I am your servant for Jesus, say, I am acutely aware that God has left me and he's left every single one of us here to serve. Here to minister. You want to be great? Be a servant. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus said. You want to be great? Be a servant. Let me close with this, and then Brother Donald's going to come with the announcements. I was doing some reading uh, this past week during my devotion of. And something was said that I hadn't really thought about. That on the night Jesus was betrayed, he told the disciples, well, that's when he washed the disciples' feet, girded himself with a towel, got down on his knees and washed their feet. Well, I think it's in the Gospel of Luke. The next event at least recorded in Luke, was their arguing about who was going to be greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Here Jesus has got down on his knees, girding himself with the towel, the creator of man out of clay, the dust of the earth, washed the clay's dirty feet, told the clay that you should do what I've done to each other. And they turned around and argued about who was going to be the greatest. Missed the point altogether. How, how many times do we miss the lesson? Thank all of you. Uh, that, that yellow pad, where is that, that yellow pad? Okay. Yes. Uh, I didn't want to just interrupt in the class. Because so, you got to talk. Tell me what the pad is for. Mm -hmm. So it stopped right here. Okay. <laughs> the pad is for the name. I, I ask everyone to write down the names of two classes of people. Number one, those of your friends and family who are not Christians. I want their names. I want to begin praying for them. The second class is for those who are Christians who have fallen away. And I want you to write their name and uh, dash after their name. You just put aura. I know that means they need to be restored. Uh, but I, I want to incorporate this list in a specific prayer time over the next eight weeks leading up to uh, June 2nd, the first Sunday in, in June, when we're going to have a one-day revival. Okay. So, Cherie, just pass it back. And, but thank all of you for being here, and next week, the Lord willing, finding God in the broken pieces. How many of you read the other article I gave you? God does not let you down. What were your thoughts about it, honey? Inspiring? Okay. Okay. Still hard to conceptualize at times how much God loves him. Anyone else? Anyone else have any thoughts from, from, from that? Okay, Brother Donald, the announcements and
Any final prayer requests? Our announcements and prayer requests Wednesday the third. The United Farm Workers are collecting spare change the first and second Sunday in April. The special collection container will be located in the bookstore. Thank you in advance for being a change warrior for Southwestern Christian College. These will be located in the bookstore. There will be a men's training class Saturday at 6 from 10 o'clock a.m. until noon in all our brothers. Our next food giveaway is Tuesday, April 16th from 10 o'clock a.m. until noon. Prayers are requested for Sister Nicole Bird, Sister Linda McLean is with us this morning, Sister Sharon Foster, Sister Mary Tatum, Sister Sandy Pollard, Brother Melvin Fowles. Yes. Traveling grace for those who are, all those who are traveling, Sister Mary Jackson, who is traveling in Georgia. <coughs> prayers for the bereaved families and lost loved ones and for their caregivers. And I did, uh, we, we do have a, a guest, we have a visiting guest, Sister Gloria, would you just give us your name? Do you have any, do you have, do you participated in the class? Um, my name's Gloria G. Um, this has been like the most, it's like, it's been the most exciting. The um, um, Bible study that I attended. <laughs> because usually you don't get that interaction, and I love this. So I will be coming back. Amen. Incidentally, this is Sister Von Seal Hill's daughter in law. Oh, 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 okay. She was married to Ray. Von Seal Hills. Right. Okay. So nice to have you. And it's good, so nice to have you. Yes, it is. Yeah. Are there other prayer requests? Repentance? Sister Emma Brown uh, called me yesterday. Her grandson, her great grandson, Damarian, is having surgery on tomorrow, and she asked that we lift him in prayer. Also, remember Tess. Tess has been visiting with us. Uh, she did not visit Sunday because her mother passed away on Saturday. So I tried to call her. I didn't get an answer. I did leave a message. But let's continue to lift uh, Tess in prayer and comfort for her and, and her family. And also, uh, along with my brothers, we want to welcome those sisters back who are traveling. To the election. Other prayer requests? Let us, sister. Yeah. Um, I have some prayers for myself and my dad. Sunday I was here and um, I made it through Bible study Sunday school and I felt dizzy. And so I ran off and went home to lay down. But um, just keep me in your prayers. I don't know. I know I had not been sleeping well, but and eating well either. But that might have caused it. But um, just keep me in your prayers and my family. Thank you. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you so so bountifully for this day and this occasion, we thank you for the lessons which you have presented to us. We have learned and we know that you are there. We find you, we, we need you when we, when we need you most. You're there for us and with us. So we thank you for all, all of the all items and articles that we've identified this morning. Knowing that you're God and trusting that you are our, our Heavenly Father. You're always there for us and there with us. Once again, we thank you for Brother McLean, our, our minister, who stood boldly before the class and always uh, is, is knowledgeable in these matters that, that, to guide us in, in the scriptures and in, in your word. 
So, I, so I, we thank you for uh, Sister Brown, Sister, Sister uh, Emma Brown, who's, who's asked prayer for Demaria. We she, Sister Brown, on, on numerous occasions, she's asked prayers for Demaria and her grandsons, and she's always concerned about her family. And we pray for Demaria. Pray, pray, we pray that he'll uh, face the surgeons boldly and, and trusting in you, Lord, and you can have him uh, bring him back and restore him once again. Lord, we ask a special prayer for Sister Warner. Sister Warner was uh, as uh, by her, on her on her statement, she was here in service. She was in service on Sunday, and she experienced uh, some dizziness. And we pray for her, and we pray with Sister Warner. We we pray for Sister Warner because in her family for, for the recent loss of their loved one. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you, and once again we thank you for the congregation, and we thank the minister, and we thank you for the church that we were able to participate in in their loved ones. Homegoing, so Lord, we thank you for for all of, all of the members who were who were present, and we thank you for uh, the lesson and the message which you've given to us. I'm sure that we were we were thoroughly moved and, and informed in this homegoing. Bless bless us, Lord, as we continue to pray for and with Tess. We just pray that through through her statement, she she is she 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 enjoys the class and she she's always with us on every occasion when she can be here. And we just pray that uh, you'll comfort fam the family at the loss of, of, of her mother. And we just pray, Lord, that you'll continue to bless Tess and bless all of those who are newly converted and still maintaining their presence and still coming out to worship and serve you. Lord, we, we ask a special effort as, as identified by our, by our minister, there is, a, there is a need for us to reach out and, and, and seek and save those who are lost. And so we just thank you for this effort. We pray that we can join in with Brother McLean, praying for and praying with those members who are, who are lost, those loved ones who are lost, the members of the body. We join in and pray for those who need to hear your word and will hear your word and come out and worship together and, and come out and be saved. So we just pray that we can be instrumental in teaching and, and, and following your message to see and save those who are lost. So we just thank you for blessing us together as a family. Once again, we thank you for all the, our sisters who have been traveling through the lectureship. And thank you once again for this day of study. Bless us now, Lord, in Jesus' name, let us all say amen. 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 Thank you.